All right, guys. So thank you guys all for tuning in. This is awesome. We're uh, seeing a lot of action right now on the chat box. As you can see, there's people from literally all over the world right now. So thank you guys for either staying up, waking up, uh, getting ready for bed, all of the stuff. <laughs> My name is Lorenzo Gamboa. I'm the Senior Associate Director. I'm going to be sharing with you guys, hopefully, uh, the waitlist process for Santa Clara this coming year. I want to thank you guys all for, um, again, accepting our offer and want to hopefully get you guys some, some timeline of what you're about to go into and hopefully give you guys some advice. Um, know throughout this whole entire thing, please feel free to chat in as many questions, whatever it is that's on your mind, your biggest concerns or any of those kind of things. We're going to try and address those for you. I do have some uh, colleagues online with us. I'll share it with you right now. Sorry about that. But as you can see myself, um, I'm joined by my colleague Gerardo Miranda here, who's going to be moderating the session. And then we have two current students that are actually here with us as well. We're going to share their perspective. Uh, Sydney and then my other colleague, Charlie, who actually was on the wait list himself. So he'll be able to shed some uh, light on all this process and hopefully demystify it all for you. And it doesn't sound as scary as what I'm about to present. Sound good? Give me a thumbs up if you guys got it. Awesome. All right, guys. So really quick, I'm going to be trying to go with you guys a little bit about the waitlist process. Um, mostly, why do we do this? Um, it's not that you guys weren't qualified. You obviously are. You're great candidates for any university. We're honored. We're privileged to have you guys. We do this because we want to prevent from over-enrolling in Santa Clara, so it's purposely done. Um, and know that we do think about you guys as fully qualified. It's just we want to make sure that, again, we don't extend over capacity because we want to give you guys every resource if you do enroll to be able to dream equally on any opportunity that you might have in Santa Clara. So this presentation is going to go over a little bit about the timeline go over a couple of the frequently asked questions that we often get for waitlisted students. And then I'm going to talk to you, some of you about that whole process of internally transferring, because a lot of students want to consider either the business school or the engineering school. And if you didn't know this, those are some of our smaller programs. Right now, business only enrolls about 25% of the entering class, engineering about 15% of the entering class. And if you came in under arts and sciences, you still you do have an opportunity to enroll, but there are certain steps that you must uh, follow before you, beforehand. So I wanna help you guys with the, some of those things. And then last but not least, I'll end off with some recommendations that hopefully can help some of you guys who are really ambitious and wanna get off sooner rather than later of how to navigate this whole process with waitlist. And again, all your questions are welcome. We are taking notes right now on all of those things. So feel free to address them and put them in. We'll try and get to as many of them before the hour. So, starting off, the waitlist activity at Santa Clara, we've already started. So some of you guys may have friends or everything that have already been hearing from Santa Clara. That's because we want to be ambitious. We know that you guys are going through a lot of stress right now, especially through all this COVID stuff. Uh, we are learning through all this process as well. And we want to put at ease uh, many of your fears as, po uh, as, poss as early as possible. And that's why we decided to jump a little bit before May 1. So if you are really ambitious, you can possibly get a, a call this week, next week, uh, because we want to try and call as many students who really want to join the Bronco family before the May 1 deadline so you're not forced to have to double deposit somewhere else. Okay? It can extend, however, beyond the May 1 deadline. So you can get called in May. You can get called in June. We will try to get as many done within those three months. But again, there might be a few of you who might have to stay on a little bit longer. And that'll be up to you if you decide to take us up on that offer. Space off of the waitlist is not determined by rank or any of that kind of stuff. It really does come down to do we have the capacity and the opportunity to fit you in whatever it is that you chose or opted for at Santa Clara. We will always try and give you your priority. So if you offered or were offered an opportunity to enter engineering and then opted arts and sciences, I'm always going to try and give you engineering first. Um, because that's hopefully what you have always wanted, and we want to make your dream come, become available. However, again, if engineering does become full, then I will go to that backup option for you, 
and offer you arts and sciences with the opportunity to internal transfer after if that's what you wish. Um, demonstrated interest, definitely a plus. This is how we are tracking and trying to figure out who are those students who really, really want to get off of Santa Clara's waitlist. I will tell you right now, we have about 1,500 students on the list, okay? So you're not alone, but I do not have 1,500 spots to offer waitlisted students. So the more active, the more progressive you are in demonstrating that you really want to be part of the Santa Clara community, then those are the students that were possibly more than likely be able to bring off earlier rather than later. If you do get called, you're gonna have 24 hours to make that decision. So we sent you an email previously, giving you guys step-by-step step what the order might be like. We do ask that you stick to that 24 hour because if you don't, we don't hear from you, you will get withdrawn from the application process and we're gonna make space for those other students because again, we have 1500 students to try to go through before um, the next three months. If you do get a call before May 1, let's say I call you tomorrow, then you will have until May 1, which is the national deposit deadline to make your deposit and enrollment. We do ask that if we do call you, that you are hopefully, again, excited about coming off the waitlist and you are with it full intent deciding to enroll at Santa Clara. If we happen to call you post May 1 deadline, let's say I call you on May 2nd or May 5th, then you will have five days from the day that I make that call and offer you that position to then make your enrollment and deposit at Santa Clara. If you do not make that enrollment deposit, you will be withdrawn again, and then we will give that spot to another individual who will hopefully make that deadline. We will hopefully get to every single student on the list by no later than July 31st, okay? So there is an end to the tunnel. If you don't get called by May 1, light your candles. No, I'm just joking. As I told you guys earlier, we're willing to look at you guys all as much as possible. Yes, you can get called after May 1. Um, again, do whatever it is that you think will ease your mind, but demonstrated interest, as I told you, will help your odds of getting in. Candles, yeah, they can help you, but uh, be cautious, okay? We don't want anybody burning anything down. We do want you to get familiar with the transfer process though as well, because unfortunately, again, not all 1500 students will be able to get access to Santa Clara. So if you do want to get in, even after we close you out, there is that transfer opportunity coming into Santa Clara University. Many students fear the transfer process because they assume that you have to do two years outside of the Santa Clara before you can apply. That's not us. We only require certain course requirements for, in order for you guys to complete, to be highly selectable and recommended for transfer. You can actually accomplish all that in one year if you really pushed yourself. Okay, depending on the program that you're looking for, arts and science, business, or engineering. So we ask you to please go and check out the transfer website, read through those details as well, so you can get familiar with that process. And then don't fear emailing us or giving us a call at any point in time. Students will be encouraged to upload additional information, like we said in your emails. So please go back to your accounts. If there's anything that you have that you would like to send or email, whatever, you're gonna upload it directly to your account. We don't want you to be emailing Santa Clara app status because we're not gonna have the capacity or bandwidth to meet the demand in such a short window. So we ask you to be proactive and log into your personal accounts so that we can actually get all that information and you know that you uploaded it and that it's done and completed. Each and every one of you, we will review your applications. We are doing it every single day as we try to figure out who are the ones that we're gonna elevate to that waitlist call the following day. Will merit-based scholarships be available? I'm gonna be brutally honest. Merit scholarships at this time have been exhausted, okay? There is no time for me to be able to go back and say, we are gonna honestly match or do any of the stuff. We do not match packages from other institutions. Um, again, it's just the name of the game right now for Santa Clara. 
Will financial aid be available? Financial aid will be available to the extent of need-based aid. That means if you filed FABSA, if you filed CSS profile, those might be your options. However, if you're looking for Santa Clara grant money again, all of those funds have been exhausted at this time. So we wanna be brutally honest with those of you who are on this line and who have taken up the offer so that you know that we're not playing smoke and mirrors with you, okay? How will you be notified? If you are selected, as I mentioned earlier, representative from Santa Clara will either call you or email you. So please, please stay up to date with all your email accounts. I know you're probably getting bombarded by everybody, but if you're really serious about getting into Santa Clara, this is the mode of, of communication that we will have, and we need a confirmed answer by you. Not your parent, not your um, buddy or whoever. It needs to be you, your account responding to that account uh, request. Students that are overseas, you will only, we won't be able to call you. It is important that you do respond again with that 24 hour time restriction because we will need to close out if we don't get access or confirmation from you to give another student the opportunity to enroll if that's what they wish. Now, for those of you guys who want to transfer into the School of Business, okay, there is, at any point in time of your career at Santa Clara, you can apply to do the internal transfer to the business school. There are no specific course requirements. You just have to maintain a certain GPA and show that you have the right interest and mentality to join the business school. Again, it is only 25% of the entering cohort, so they can and have to be selective. The internal transfer students may find the additional quarter because there are going to be certain requirements that you're going to simply miss out on. So depending on how you're willing to overload or bring in the extra units, whatever, that can dictate whether you are going to graduate in four years or you're going to need that extra quarter or summer to graduate on time. Some students not admitted can actually be waitlisted again and act offered admission in the following year of enrollment at Santa Clara if that's what happens with your application. Now, in order for you to consider the application, application rounds are considered only once a year. That is on April 1st. It is no joke, but it is April Fool's Day, and you do have to get all your application and everything completed by that date. You must have two quarters full enrollment completed at Santa Clara in order for them to review you for consideration. You must also have a minimum GPA of a cumulative 3.0 in order for you to be considered and apply at Santa Clara for the business school. You must submit two pages. Sorry, one second. You must also submit two pages of an essay in order for them to consider you and say, why is it that you want to be a business student? And yes, your SAT and ACT scores may be considered for your internal transfer to the business school. Now, for some of you guys who are just simply interested in business, we do have another avenue and option for many of you. Anybody can minor out of any of our programs, whether it be in business, whether it be in engineering. But if you want to major in it, you must be in that school. You want to major in accounting, you must be in the business school. But if you're interested in any of the following minors, business analytics, economics, entrepreneurship, international business, management information systems, real estate, or even retail studies. Any of you can have access to any of those things while double majoring, minoring, whatever it is you guys wanna do, be creative and unique with your education. But if you're okay with a minor, again, you don't have to follow the internal transfer to business. Now, for those of you guys who wanna be engineers, a little more selective as well because it is only 15% of the entering body. However, engineers, they do tend to know right away if you are intended to be an engineer, okay? You'll start off by second quarter. If you're not cutting it, you're probably gonna jump out of that school and jump into the School of Arts and Sciences. So they do have a little more bandwidth and accessibility to them 
It's just that you do have to start taking certain classes in order for you to be enrolled in it. Now, knowing that Santa Clara is a Silicon Valley, a lot of people say they want to come and study computer science on our campus, which is awesome. But the only issue is that it is complete, it is very, very competitive and it is currently full. So students off of the wait list, you will be very limited if we do offer you an option, an opportunity into computer science. I'm not saying we're not going to, but reality currently is that there are very, very limited spots. I have, I think, currently offered, I think, two or three spots into the School of Engineering for Computer Science. So it doesn't mean no, but it's highly unlikely. Okay. So may want to think about an alternate major if that's what you're looking for, or be willing to simply minor in it, or consider double majoring in arts and sciences, computer science. A student who enters the engineering school program may also, again, have to find themselves adding an extra quarter, an extra summer, just simply because you have to meet the requirements for that graduation of that school and that program. The number of stu students in either business or engineering will vary depending on space and accommodations. Okay. For the business school, they will ask you to complete again two quarters and they ask you to do the following series of coursework. Major thing that you do want to take into consideration is if you get into arts and sciences, make sure you are taking calculus level math for engineers, sciences for engineers, not just for arts and sciences, because you want to not lose ground want to make sure that you're staying up to par with everybody else. They also ask you to make sure that you complete the general core curriculum of critical thinking and writing, which are your English courses, and your cultures and ideas series, which we'll go over with some of our current students when we talk about core curriculum. We also ask you to submit the application by the first week of April. So again, that April Fool's week, will be your deadline for either business school or engineering school. You also must submit an essay asking or indicating why it is that you intend to enroll into the School of Engineering. Now recommendations for every single one of you. We ask that you please, please read thoroughly all the communications that have been sent to you about the uh, confirming enrollment and the wait list and acceptance of it. We ask that you have a very honest conversation with your parents now about financing the university and the enrollment and the opportunities that you're looking for. And that you understand the financial opportunities that are limited currently to need-based aid at Santa Clara, meaning your FABSA, your CSS, and if you haven't filed those, get those up to date and sent over to campus. We also want to say that make sure that your voicemail is set up that it's not full, that we can actually leave a message if we do call you. And please, please do not have inappropriate voice messages <laughs> because remember, first impressions do matter. And we will look at them and if we do get a call and it's an appropriate message, we don't have to actually offer you the opportunity. We can rescind that opportunity automatically based off of our gut instinct as admissions officers for the university. Because again, we wanna invite you into our family and we want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable when you come to our campus. If at any point you decide that this is no longer a viable option for you, or you no longer want to be enrolled, then we kindly ask that you please let us know by submitting an email to app status indicating so, because then again, that allows us to actually be able to filter among the 1500 other options that we have to really op honestly offer the opportunities to those who are willing to come. Sound good? Yeah. Now we know college is really, really expensive, regardless of where you end up going. So we wanted to also add this in there for you. Um, I know you probably have resources at your schools and all that stuff, but we want to make sure that you guys can look at some of these websites. These can help fund some of your education, no matter where it is that you enroll. One that I currently personally enjoy uh, utilizing a lot is actually uh, Scully, S-C-H-O-L-L-Y. It is a mobile application you can download for free and it can help you find scholarships all the way to your PhD. So there is no reason why you should or should not be applying for scholarships. Okay. 
Is anybody left-handed in here by any chance? Okay, awesome. I see a couple of you guys. Well, did you know that you have $500 to any college of your choice? It is called the Left-Handed Association Scholarship. Crazy, but it exists. Okay. How many of you guys have ever played with duct tape before? Raise your hand. Or used duct tape before. Okay. It's the best babysitting tool ever. But duct tape has two different scholarships that I highly encourage you guys to look at. One is a duct tape uh, suspended bridge challenge competition. And then the other one for you creative individuals, a prom suit, prom dress strictly made out of duct tape can win you $5,000 to any college of your choice. So look for those kind of opportunities as well, okay? And now I've spoken a lot, so I wanna go back, read a couple of your questions, but I do wanna give our current student ambassadors the opportunity to introduce themselves and tell them, us a little bit about their story. We're gonna open this up to some Q&A. So take it away, Sydney. All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sydney Meyer. I'm currently a sophomore at Santa Clara. I'm originally from Chicago and I am a theater and child studies double major. Um, so both of those degrees are in the College of Arts and Sciences. So I saw there was a question about, can you double major with arts and sciences? Yes, very, very easy. Um, at Santa Clara, outside of being a student ambassador, I am in one of our five acapella groups on campus. I'm also involved in our theater department, both as a performer and as a member of the crew. Uh, I am involved in off-campus Greek life. Uh, so I'm in a sorority that is technically not affiliated with the university. Uh, I was supposed to go on, a, on an immersion trip over spring break, but it unfortunately got canceled. Um, but I went through the whole preparation process so I can answer any questions about that. And I'm supposed to be studying abroad in Sydney, Australia in the fall. Again, who knows what'll happen with that, but I already did the whole application, so I can answer any questions about that. Charlie, go ahead. All right, hi guys. My name is Charlie Duye. I'm a senior at Santa Clara University from um, Malibu, California, originally. I am studying finance in the business school and political science in the School of Arts and Sciences with minors in sustainability and management and information system. Um, so I'm taking, um, I have two majors in two different schools, which is also totally permissible. Um, I started out um, at Santa Clara from the wait list, accepted undeclared in arts and sciences, and went through the internal transfer process as well into the business school, if you have any questions about that. Um, and since um, coming to Santa Clara, it's been an awesome experience. I was a little worried that since I was off the wait list, I may have been like bottom of the food chain or something, but everyone at the whole campus is so supportive and professors like give you every opportunity to succeed. So I've since been placed in the honors program at the school just after performing well, even though I was off the wait list. And I'm now the student body vice president as well. Um, so I've been involved in like a bunch of things over the course of my couple years here. So let me know if you have any questions about anything. All right, Gerardo, if you want to take, uh, go ahead and start moderating some, with some of these questions. It looks like we have a couple questions yeah, about awesome. majoring and college. Absolutely, cool. Thank you, Lorenzo. So uh, I'll be moving these around. Uh, just try to throw in as many questions as you can. It seems like many of these questions are toward either financial aid or showing interest. It seems like a good amount of these are showing interest in the university. Uh, just to kind of answer the quick questions about the broad sense. Uh, for financial aid, like Mr. Gamboa just said, um, basically we're exhausted in all our married aid. So any married aid, there, is a, there really isn't a chance of getting any unless there's any need-based aid specific. Um, and the need-based aid, you can submit that through either the FAFSA or the uh, CSS profile found on your college board. So if you reach out to the counselors, uh, which will provide the contact list for all the counselors that we do have. Uh, the next question is, I know which is the remainder of them, is you know, what is the best way to show continued interest, right? Uh, to answer that question very frank and clear, it's basically you can send in a letter to any of the counselors or basically an email stating that you're still considered Santa Clara as one of your top choice. If not, it is your top choice because, you know, we know that we want to take in students that really want to be part of our community. Like Charlie just said, right? Students that want to come here, we want them here as opposed to like, well, I'm still weighing my options between seven other different schools. 
We understand that every single one of you in this phone call has many options. We understand that and we know that, right? If you show your continued interest by saying, you know, I really want to be a Bronco and I want to be a class of 2024, chances are we may extend that offer to you. And that's very, and as very clear as possible. And the best way to do that is to send an email to the territory manager or the counselor that's in your territory managing. And which is the email that we'll put in right now, not the email, but the actual contact list. And it ranges from everywhere. Like Mr. Gamboa has Colorado. I have most of like Contra Costa area, Sacramento, those areas and regions. And you can just send us an email just stating that you're still interested in these sections. All right. I'm moving to the next one. So this one is for uh, Charlie. Um, so, oh, and Sydney. So Sydney, can you answer this question first? Sorry. So how do you balance your social life with academics and your career development? Yeah, um, I think that a mark of a lot of students at Santa Clara is that we like to work hard and play hard. So obviously we all know that our academics are very important and that's ultimately the reason why we're there is to get a degree. Um, but the nice thing is that you're only in class for a few hours a day. It's not like high school where you're in school for six hours and then you go straight to practice or whatever you do after school and they do all your homework. Um, you're only in class for an hour, hour 40 minutes at a time. Um, so there is a lot more free time to your day. So I think that's one of the ways that you can kind of um, balance it is that the time that you're actually spent in class is not as much as in high school. Um, and for me, the stuff that I've enjoyed the most have been the various activities that I've joined. So I would definitely suggest to get involved in something, no matter what it is, outside of the um, academic environment. Because um, I think it provides another great opportunity for growth and making connections and just having some fun. I agree with everything that Sydney said. The only thing that I want to add is that you may hear some like rumors about other schools that it's extremely competitive there and people will like maybe try to even sabotage you somehow. And that is just, that could not be more false for Santa Clara. I think everyone is always willing to help each other in any class that you're in because um, they're all very small. So you get to know everyone. You can always form like a study group to work on assignments together or um, like study or whatever you want to do. And the other thing regarding professional development is there's so much strength to being a Bronco that the network for after you graduate is so strong and alumni are always looking out for you and like um, looking for any ways that they could help you out in your professional development, whether that would just be seeking advice on how to um, follow a similar career trajectory or maybe even like an internship itself. Um, there's plentiful opportunities. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. I know other questions are coming in as well regarding how do you show your, your interest in the school and where to send them. Uh, the best way to do that interest, and let's say if you wanted to upload any documents like a resume, uh, there's a simple website. You can send it to appstatus at seu.edu. Um, and that'll be the easiest way and we can update your file accordingly. So if you have information, so let's say you have um, yeah, if you have like an extra resume or maybe you have letters of recommendations, you can add that there, all right? Actually, let me uh, interrupt on that, Gerardo. Um, yeah. Right now, we are not encourage you guys to email that information to App Status. We want you to go into your account and actually upload it. There is a section in there where you will have access the same way that you guys did with all your other stuff to upload personal information to your personal account. And we will reflect, it'll reflect on your account. As soon as you upload it, it'll indicate to us that you've uploaded some information regarding for, uh, waitlist info. Great, thank you, thank you. I forgot that one small detail, my bad. <laughs> so uh, the best way, so some of the people, so some of the counselors that we started calling, so we started calling, I think last week, all students off the waitlist, right? And I saw a few questions in there regarding what phone number we'll be calling from. Uh, to be honest with you, it's all kinds of phone numbers. Some of our counselors are from like Boston. So some of them are their personal phone numbers. Some people have Google numbers, you know, some people have their office phone, like at home, I don't know how they did it. But it's just since most of us are working remotely right now, many of us are calling, you know, from different phone lines. Uh, at this point, it's not really the phone that matters that we're calling. It's the email that we have on file. So if you have not been receiving any emails from either admission at scu.edu, you know, or anything that we do have that ongoing out to you, make sure to check that inbox. We give you about 24 hours to read, to look at that email and then respond to that email to that counselor. 
And it won't necessarily be your territory manager, which means it's your counselor, the admission counselor. It may be someone different. So if it goes to voicemail, which is fine, we'll leave you a message. But the next thing is follow up on that email that we send you out because we only give you 24 hours or by a 3 p.m. deadline. And if we don't hear by you from you by 3 p.m., we're going to be removing you from our queue because we're going to assume that you're not a student that's interested no longer in the university. Okay. Um, the next one, I'm going to send this out to Charlie. So um, basically, what you'll be graduating in four years, right, Charlie? Um, would you need an extra year for this or an extra quarter? Or how have you managed your time here at the university? No, um, I'm graduating after just four years and I'm graduating with two majors and two minors. Um, something that even though um, I'm getting my degrees from two different schools at Santa Clara, there's so much overlap between the studies that I could take a political science class that's related to the economy and it'll get me credits for um, both majors. So it's quite easy actually at Santa Clara to add on an extra major or minor without having to add extra time at the university in my experience. Great, this other question is for Charlie. So someone asked, someone has held leadership roles while they've been at their school. Can you touch on your leadership roles at Santa Clara University and how you got involved with them? Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks for whoever asked that question. Um, I think that the first thing that I joined at Santa Clara was when I was a freshman, I joined the Model United Nations team, which was a really low commitment, but gave me the opportunity to um, meet a lot of cool people from like all different grades at Santa Clara. And I connected with some people on that team who were involved in student government and then helped me get involved with that for my sophomore year. And I've stayed in since then. Um, so I think it's just about putting yourself out there and meeting new people and there's plentiful opportunities at Santa Clara for getting involved and for leadership opportunities. So it's just about um, putting yourself out there. And then my second year, I started applying to more positions and just cited the couple of experiences that I had from my um, early years at Santa Clara. And um, it just reflects positively that you display an interest in the university early on and you're committed to improving the campus. And then it's pretty easy to um, move up from there. Uh, Sydney, someone asked about programs that they were offered at the university and things they've been taken advantage of or taken advantage of. Uh, what have you taken advantage of so far? And I know you're early on while you're at SCU, but you can tell us the transition that you've had when you're in high school all the way till now and the things you've learned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was always the person in high school who was maybe involved in one too many things. Um, and that has not changed since I've gotten to Santa Clara. Um, going into school, I knew that there were a couple of things that I wanted to be involved in. Um, so I did some research ahead of time on various clubs that I wanted to join. The great thing is that there is um, an activity fair uh, the first week of fall and winter quarter where all the clubs that we have are out tabling and see what SU has to offer um, and what opportunities you can take advantage of. And um, you can put your name on as many lists as you want to and get emails from as many people as you want. And you can kind of pick and choose what you want to be involved with. Um, for me, fall quarter, my first year, I auditioned for an acapella group. I joined a sorority and I applied to be a student ambassador. Um, all of those things ended up working out. I joined an acapella group, I joined a sorority, I got hired as a student ambassador. And um, while it was very, very unexpected, it ended up completely changing um, my experience at Santa Clara because the things that I got involved in are what kept me at that university. Um, and it's been great ever since. I got cast in the winter musical also my first year. So that kind of like helped me put my foot into a couple of things that I was really interested in. Um, but a lot of the clubs and stuff that we have, you can just sign up for an email and then go to however many meetings you want to. A lot of them are pretty low commitment. Um, and like Charlie was saying earlier, just getting involved in things and what you want to do is really important because it can also help you build connections for things that you maybe want to do after you leave. Thank you so much, Sydney. I appreciate it. Uh, Lorenzo, would you mind answering a few questions about housing? So I know housing, uh, the deadline comes up as well by May 1st. But you can talk about students, can they still select their roommates up until after the May 1st deadline? And then how will housing work at the university if a student's admitted off the wait list? It's a really good question for whoever asked it. Um, 
right now you do have the ability if you get called off prior to May 1 and you know your best friend or whoever is coming and you really want to share a roommate with them, um, you just have to exchange your student ID numbers and request that through housing prior to May 1. Post May 1, you're going to be pretty much stuck with whatever they, uh, your SPIF, which is your housing information, which is kind of like your eHarmony account, basically. Uh, we're going to ask you everything from like, what time do you go to bed? What time do you wake up? Do you like music? Do you whatever? Um, are you the kind who exercises? All these kind of random questions. And it's all going to compile into an algorithm that's going to spit out who your potential roommate is going to be. I always say, you know, I encourage be adventurous. This is the time to be, you know, unique in college. Um, my biggest uh, fear is that, you know, and I've seen this, people come in with their best friends and then before the end of the first quarter, you become the worst enemies. Um, so I, you know, it's up to you. Uh, but right now, if you get called off post May 1, you will not have the flexibility to request a housemate. If you get called pre May 1, you do. Will there be enough housing for everybody? Yes, there is. So there's not a fear for any of that. You will, we have enough space, there is enough accommodation. We currently actually have a two year housing requirement in place now for this incoming class. So you will be asked to stay on campus for at least two years. We have everything from the traditional housing style to the suite style. So if you want your own bedroom and all that kind of stuff and isolate by yourself, go for it. But if you want to be adventurous and you know enjoy that college experience and be with roommates and all that stuff, we have all that there for you as well. And I'll actually turn it over to the current students to talk about you know what the accommodations are like because that's some of the biggest fears I think for a lot of students is you know is it going to be a rinky dinky little kind of you know tent in the backyard or is it going to be you know what am I looking for? Great, thank you, Lorenzo. Yeah, go ahead, Sydney. Oh, I was just going to say that all of the dorms are really, really nice. Um, you don't have to worry about like slumming it in any of the residence halls. Uh, not all of them have been built within the last year, but they've all been renovated. Um, so like no matter what style you choose and no matter what residence hall you're placed into, everything is like top notch. Something that I really love that I didn't realize how nice it was until I moved off campus was the fact that there is a sink in every single room regardless of the living style, which is huge. Um, so definitely they're, they're super nice. Don't worry about getting some like kind of gross old dorm room. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, Charlie, this is kind of specific for you as well since you are graduating this year and then you are in the business school. Can you talk about the research or the internships that you took advantage of while you were a student at SCU? and your time that you will be leaving. I know there was a video that was sent out to all the students here, which you all should watch, you know, but Charlie, you know, he's taking a good advantage. He's taking advantage of multiple resources that were available to him. Can you just highlight some of them? Totally. Um, so my summer after my freshman year, I had like a unpaid internship just at some local um, law firm by my home um, that was given to me by um, a family friend. And then the two summers after then, I stayed in the Bay and took advantage of the Silicon Valley, basically. I worked the summer after my sophomore year at SAP, which is not a, which is a B2B company. So not a lot of consumers are familiar with it, but it's one of the biggest tech companies around the world. And I came up about that opportunity at a career fair where there was just an open position and I went on campus and gave them my resume and just talked to them briefly and then went about the interview process. But Santa Clara was instrumental in helping me get that opportunity. And then the following summer, um, I was a little less lucky finding an opportunity on my own. So I started reaching out to some Santa Clara alum in the area and was able to secure an internship at Cypress Semiconductors, which is another multi-billion dollar company in the Silicon Valley and doing finance work for them just based on essentially the, the opportunities that Santa Clara gave to me. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Sydney, would you mind talking about other research experiences as well? I know you're in other calls with multiple counselors. Uh, can you talk about like other, what other students have taken advantage of and then specifically you know, the pre-health routes that students can take whether at the ACU or pre-law? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think one of the great things about Santa Clara is that 
Santa Clara does not have a really large graduate school, so most of the research opportunities go directly towards undergraduate students, um, which is really, really nice. So I have a friend who she is in the School of Engineering. Her sophomore year, she reached out to a professor um, and asked if she could do research with that professor. Uh, the professor said yes, and they did research together. At the end, at the end of her sophomore year, she had a paper published with her name attached to it. So that, like, all she had to do for that opportunity was ask her professor. Um, professors are always doing research, regardless of the department. Um, it's not just, you know, the hard sciences. Uh, I'm in the child studies department, and one of my professors, uh, who's also my advisor in that department, reached out to me and was like, "Hey, I'm doing a lot of research with." Um, younger children, if you ever want to have opportunities for that, let me know. Um, so there really are tons of ways you can take advantage of research opportunities. It's just up to you to ask for um, those opportunities through professors. And even if the professor you ask isn't doing research at that time, chances are that somebody else is, um, that they know is also doing research so they can kind of reference you there. Awesome, thank you, Sydney, appreciate it. So, um, so if you get, admitted as an undeclared student, Sydney, and maybe you're in the College of Arts and Sciences. Can you tell me about switching majors within the College of Arts and Sciences and how difficult the process is? Yeah, so if you wanna switch majors within the College of Arts and Sciences, it's literally as easy as signing a piece of paper. Um, that goes for most of the majors throughout the schools. The tricky part is when you wanna switch schools. So if you wanna go from Arts and Sciences to Business or Engineering, that's going to get tricky and you have to do the internal transfer process like Lawrence I was talking about earlier. But if you want to switch majors within the school that you're in, it's easy as signing a piece of paper. You go to your academic advisor um, and they can provide you with that resource necessary. Um, and then you just fill it out and you hand it in and then your major is switched. So it's very, very feasible and a lot of people do it. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, this one's for Lorenzo. Lorenzo, is it possible to be taken off of the waitlist but not admitted to the intended school you wanted to be a part of? So like, for example, if you wanted to be part of the business school, but you were actually admitted into the College of Arts and Sciences, how would you go about that? Yes, it is. So again, we will always try and give you your first intended major or interest. But if it is that because of restrictions on capacity, business or engineering, again, uh, we will give you the op, you were given an option to say, yes, I'm willing to consider arts and sciences as a backup. So that's the only reason we would then go back and say, well, you know, unfortunately we can't give you business, but we can give you arts and sciences for now. Uh, and you take it or leave it. Great. Awesome. There's another one for Lorenzo real quick. So uh, when deciding on who you will take off the wait list or us, right, and offer acceptances to, how are you sifting through the applicant pool scene as there are about 1,500 students? So how are we going about this? We're trying to see how many candles were lit. Um, we're looking through who was naughty, who was nice. No, I'm struggling. Uh, we're, we're literally looking at, you know, the gaps in the class. So I'm looking to see how can we create a better incoming class that's going to really push each other to a unique stage um, once they cross. So do we have a gap? Let's say maybe we, I need more female engineers. I'm gonna go to the list and look for female engineers. Maybe I'm low on males. Maybe um, you, know, you wanna be the next male math teacher all-star for the country. Shoot, I can probably get you, you know, off the uh, list right now uh, for that. Um, we wanna look for these kind of different variables and that's why I'm saying it's not really just a science, it's really kind of an art. And we wanna to try to start with those who really, really wanna come off first. So the first stage is demonstrated interest. Who has proactively reached out to us? What kind of gaps do I currently have? And who fits those gaps the best so that we can bring in a best cohort to the income entering class? Make sense? Great, this one's uh, for the ambassadors. And we have a few more questions. Uh, we have two more questions. Uh, I'll do this one next. So what's the greatest impact? So we can start with Sydney. Uh, what's the greatest impact you feel SCU has made on your life? So we can start with Sydney, then Charlie. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, Santa Clara, I mean, has had a huge impact on me in general. Um, like I said, in the beginning, I'm from Chicago. And so I moved across the country to a place that I had never been to um, outside of touring the university with nobody that I knew. So right away, like that made me grow a ton. 
um, because I had to completely kind of revamp my social life and everything kind of about um, myself and how I identified in an academic setting. Um, so I think one of the ways that Santa Clara continues to um, have a huge impact on me is by pushing me outside of my comfort zone. Um, I think that it provides a really great place to try things that you've never done before and um, put yourself out there and ask for what you want. Um, and there are a lot of really great opportunities for students at Santa Clara, but nothing is going to be handed to you. It's all about asking for things and uh, working your hardest to prove to people that you are worth those opportunities. Um, so I think Santa Clara continues to um, challenge me to push myself and try things that I never thought I could do. And for me, I think one of the most important things um, that Santa Clara provided me was an education on trying to find a vocation and more of a calling in life rather than just studying to earn a major. And I think it relates to the Jesuit values of the university and their emphasis on um, like charitability and caring for the whole person and interdisciplinary studies. All of those combined have just been really helpful for me to figure out what my professional interests are and then integrating my personal interests in them. For example, um, integrating sustainability studies into my business papers or my political science papers and projects. Um, I think it's been really important for me moving forward out of college to have more of a direction in um, the actions that I'm taking in my career and kind of purposefully hoping to make the world a better place as I go about my future careers. All right. So we have one more question and then I know there's a ton of questions yeah. that we didn't get answered. So we try to, you know, try to move around the majority of them, try to integrate them into one. But Charlie and Sydney and possibly Lorenzo as well, um, kind of on the Jesuit side of this, because we are a Jesuit university as well, can you highlight a little bit about it as well, uh, just what Jesuit values mean to you? Uh, Sydney, can you start, and then Charlie, and then we can end with Lorenzo. Yeah, absolutely. So I had never really heard of the Jesuits before coming here. Um, I was a public school kid all the way, um, so I never experienced um, what that was like in an educational setting. Uh, I think for me, the way it impacts myself the most at school is through the core curriculum and through their emphasis on social justice and kind of giving back. Um, so with the core curriculum, there are a lot of requirements that you have to take, but it's more than just math, science, English, history, foreign language. You have ethics requirements, diversity, um, civic engagement, uh, cultures and ideas. There's lots of really great um, courses that you're required to take, but they provide you with a really big world view. Um, and they really help you solve problems from multiple different perspectives and kind of learn about something that may be very foreign to you, um, but maybe super necessary. So I think that is one way that's really, really big. And then another one is their emphasis on um, community service. I love that the Jesuits are men and women for others. Um, that was something that was really big to me when I was looking through schools. Um, so there is a core requirement called experiential learning for social justice, where you have to go into the community and do um, work with local schools or businesses or whatever it kind of is, depending on what course you're in. Um, so for example, uh, one of the ELSJs that I'm going to take is called Teaching the Performing Arts. So we learn about arts and uh, theater education in the classroom, and then we go to the local elementary school and teach theater to third graders once a week. So it's a way to kind of give back into the community that you're living in. Um, another one is through immersion trips. Those are run through our Ignatian Center for Jesuit Education, and they are basically week-long trips to walk in solidarity with marginalized communities. So again, experiencing something that you never have before and really figuring out a way that you can actively help people who need it. Um, so I can't speak highly enough about the Jesuit values. I really do think that they provide a really transforma transformational education that is very different from something that you can find someplace else. Yeah, I totally agree, Sydney. And I also agree that for the last, like, for the first two and a half years at Santa Clara, I had no idea what these Jesuit values were. I'd hear the words thrown around all the time. But now reflecting on the past four years, I'm like, wow, they really did a good job at integrating this into my studies. And I totally feel like I've learned a lot from it. Um, Sydney did a great job summarizing it. The only thing, there's one 
specific Jesuit value that's called cura personalis, which means caring for the whole person. And the university really um, does a good job with that specific value. Um, we have a wellness center on campus, which is meant to just um, provide wellness needs for all sorts of diverse needs, whether they're like um, alcohol related issues, um, depression, anxiety, sleep schedules. Um, I don't know, like anything that's related to wellness, we have like a specific center on campus that will help to address it as well as just every administrator and professor being briefed on the values of the university and like holding those values to themselves. It's really obvious that all these people care about you. I'm gonna just reiterate basically the same thing is, you know, at the end of the day, what we're really looking for, we are a Jesuit institution. So we as admissions officers want to find that one individual who is willing and looking to challenge the status quo. I mean, I want students here who can come in and challenge the faculty, challenge the staff, challenge your classmates, and at the end of the day, be proud about what you've accomplished and be able to stand on the pillars of what we call conscious competence, compassion. How are you going to pay it forward? Whatever it is that you do, arts and science, business, engineering. But again, remember, it's not just about you. It's like, what are we going to do, especially in like times like we are faced with today, this COVID stuff. This is stuff that you guys are gonna have to deal with even more and more, unfortunately. And so how do we find that compassion to take whatever skills that we've learned, whether it be in theater, whether it be as the engineer or the business person, and find that time of goodness in your heart to say, I can pay it forward here, okay? And when you become a Bronco, it's not just because I want you to become, you know, or we want you just to come and get a degree. That's not what we're in the business for. We're in the business of having you come and join our family for the rest of your life. You're not a Bronco for four years. You're a Bronco for the rest of the legacy. Awesome, Lorenzo. Uh, thank you so much all for joining us today. We basically ran out of time. Um, so I put down, you'll see the su.edu admission find your counselor. Um, if you want to continue your interest in the university, you really want to be here after we've just given you this presentation, um, feel free to reach out to the counselors for your territory um, and just ask them a few questions. You can, you can send them an email just regarding, hi, my name is blah, 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 like Gerardo, hey, blah, blah, whatever it is, and just kind of show your continued interest in the university. But really want to thank uh, Charlie and Sydney's time today for, you know, taking an hour out of their day. Uh, during this whole situation, especially was today, Tuesday, and then Lorenzo for, you know, holding it down as usual. Uh, feel free to reach out to the counselors if you have any specific questions regarding your area or you as an applicant, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. We are getting bombarded with many questions right now before this May 1st deadline, but have them come. We'll try to get back to you within at least 48 hours, okay? All right, well, thank you all so much for your time. Yeah, Lorenzo, you want to say anything? Don't forget to light your candle. It's cool. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Sydney. Everyone have a good day.